Today on The Dead Life, I have Sophia Dubois in-house. Although we are doing Love Me, Love Me Not, we're also commenting on some questions that come in just from her Gen Z perspective as um, in contrast to my own Gen X perspective of how we see spirituality and different questions presented to us and give our own answers from our own perspective of our generation and what we know to be true. If you want to leave me a message that might be shared on a future episode of The Dead Life in my relationship advice segment, Love Me, Love Me Not, leave it at 802-DEAD-811. That's 802-332-3811. You can follow me on Instagram at Medium Allison on my Facebook fan page, and you can binge on my YouTube videos to watch readings, including episodes of The Dead Life. Don't forget to like and subscribe. To book a reading with me, email us at booking at allisondubois.com. Well, Sophia, it's been too long. I know. I know you're having a quite a summer and looking forward to getting out of the heat here to go visit Nashville in November. So yes. that's something to look Very forward excited. to. Um, so we had some call-ins that we wanted to address Um and I thought some of the questions, are, they call for a deep dive in you being able to absorb what they're saying and then sort of give a very focused response to it. Yeah. So we're going to do our best since this is all things ethereal and putting the ethereal into words can sometimes be hard for our call-ins as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. So um, why don't you go ahead and play the first caller? Okay. Oh, hi, Allison. Uh, my name is Nancy Trainer from Rutland City, Vermont. I've been a fan forever. Uh, I really admire what you've done with your gift, especially with the Compassionate Friends organization. I just had a question about possible signs from a loved one who's passed on. I lost my younger sister, Jennifer, just a few weeks ago, uh, almost four weeks ago, to terrible cancer. And that recently my sister was out walking her little pug dog under my sister's window and 11 o'clock at night all my sister's lights were on in her apartment and the apartment's been long cleaned out and, and locked and shut up and clean you know there should be nobody there at that hour so I was just really fascinated by what Karen shared with me about seeing the lights on and just wondered if that's if that's a sign that you're familiar with that, that uh, people who passed on can possibly do. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. So from my perspective, and just given that I'm a medium and I've read over 10,000 people, um, yes, this is something that will be a sign that is commonly used by the dead. They play with the lights. So whether or not they're making them flicker or just turning them on to get your attention or off, to get your attention or manipulating a living person to get them to do it for them. Um, and it would be at an unusual time, not just a regular day where it would be switched on, but they can manipulate electronics. So with nobody in that apartment and it having been unoccupied for quite some time after her sister had died, uh, her sister would have the energy power to be able to manipulate the light on at the time that the sister is walking by the window to let them know her light has not gone out. She's very much still a part of the living and a part of their lives. So I like this sign. I think it's great that Nancy has a uh, an understanding that it was something and didn't just dismiss it. So uh, Nancy, thank you for uh, calling in. Uh, what say you? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a great sign because um, she said it, it had only been just four weeks now and this had happened, right? Um, it could maybe be occupied, doubt it, because it does take so long to go through their things and, you know, it wouldn't have been the day she died that right. it's vacant, right? So right. it takes some time. Um, also, her rent was probably already paid, so you I know, was gonna it's say, still her yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. and then... Um, it's the hour. It's 11 p.m. where it's like, yeah, she was saying a sign. She was sending a sign for sure. Yeah, I I agree. And I mean, you have sisters. You can imagine how much this means to Nancy to be able to get that sign because 
God forbid anything ever happens to one of our siblings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a person that has our childhood experiences, that watched SpongeBob with you, that gave you your first facial and, you know, taught you how to put your hair up. And and the person that you learn from, for me, it's Uncle Michael. Did he beat the shit out of me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he was my big brother, yeah. you know, and he was he went through the same experiences, same games. He was my first friend. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what your siblings are, your first best friends. And so for her to get a sign from her sister, especially after her sister suffering so much, I really do read in this sign that she's saying, I'm a bright light. I'm vibrant. I'm full of energy and I'm not gone because yeah. she watched her suffer. Well, and I think you're right when you said, thank you for not dismissing this sign because her sister knew that well, because it was her other sister that was walking the dog. So she was the one that had to put two and two together to tell Nancy. Right. right. Um, and I mean, her sister knew that they would know. Yeah. So that's why she did it. Well, and I another thing with signs that I love and people must put more weight of importance on is you'll get a chill up your spine in those moments. Mm -hmm. You know it's them. It's There's feeling. something yeah. in your soul mm -hmm. that's just saying that's them, that's them. And to the point where your body reacts in a way you don't normally in that sensation of getting that chill that grabs your attention and focuses you, your energy on them mm -hmm. so that it, the connection's made. So I think, I think the people that dismiss those experiences are missing the point yeah and i'm glad that she's not one of them definitely <laughs> so, I, agree. I agree all right let's go to the next caller okay hey Alvin. hey joe uh i'm <laughs> here in tucson arizona um my question i guess is about uh trusting my own abilities um I always have felt like I just know things sometimes. Um, especially like revolving with, around my sister, my younger sister. I, I just doesn't even have to tell me stuff. I'll just she'll say, oh, like I have to tell you something and I just know I will just say it. Like how did you know that? And it's just, I don't know. But um, we're really close in age, uh, 14 months apart actually, and um, she makes over choices in relationships. She's a, she's a single mom. Um, she's a son. Uh, he's got, starting eighth grade. And, I, and this relationship she's in, I can just, I just know it's a bad guy. Um, and she's like delusional about it. It's like nothing <laughs> Tell us how you I really can know. do. Um, <laughs> And then we all know those I think part of my fear, I really have this feeling that this relationship is going to end my sister's life. Um, and I don't know if that's my, like, this ability that I have of just knowing stuff or because I um, am so anxious about this relationship and her life and all this stuff going on that I'm making it my anxiety is giving me this feeling. I don't know if that makes sense, but if there's any, do you experience that? Is it sometimes with people close in your, to you in your life, you get maybe a feeling about something and because of your closeness with this person, you can blow it out of her portion? I don't know if that makes sense, but okay. Thank you. <laughs> so did you want to start or did you want me to start? Um, I can start this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, well, okay. There's some unanswered questions with what she said. Mm. A, I don't know how, like, her, to the extent of how good her abilities are, right? So, like, I, I can't really tell her, like, yeah, that's your abilities talking, because I don't know how good What's she is. What's her track record? How, what's her accuracy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know that. Um, and I don't know... What, if she, if it's just a bad feeling she gets with this guy or if she has evidence of like, no, this is a bad guy, right? right. Um, I think you're being a protective sister and that's okay because mm -hmm. you do have a sister intuition too. And if, I mean, pray that she doesn't die and I honestly hope you're not right in this situation. 
Um, but I think that, yeah, she should probably get out of it if you think that it's bad. Um, but I think you're, I think it's your anxiety about it and that's really eating you up. And so that's why you feel that way. There's so many yeah. uh, levels here, and I want to lay these out and have your response on these. Okay. So first of all, I will just say, so I don't forget at the end, um, Margaret Jameson, grannymagic.com, set up a tarot reading with her. You need somebody who's impartial giving you a take Definitely. on something so serious. So when it comes down to life or death issues, whether we're accurate and we're right or we're incorrect sometimes it's nice to have somebody that is a barometer of of um, impartiality to tell you what they're getting because that'll help you to recognize whether or not you're blowing it out of proportion yeah so i'll say that first of all um you know i've had this feeling before with people close to me as well. And I will say you have to be very, very careful about making premonitions about people around you that are close to you. Um, it's why mediums have other mediums bring our dads through. It's why psychics get second opinions through other people, other resources, which is why I said check out Margaret Jameson and, and get some clarity on this for your sister. Mm -hmm. Now, um, your sister, she's a single mom. She's got a kid in the eighth grade, which is the kid. What a difficult time in his life. I mean, eighth grade's not awesome for anyone. No. It's just not. Um, and, and she's got a bad relationship. Unfortunately, women who feel a little broken will draw in broken men or broken relationships. Um, now, when she says she has a foreboding sort of feeling that he's going to end her life, that's another thing that is open to interpretation. Is he, going, is he going to end her life the way it is in that not she, that she's going to die, but maybe she ends up marrying him and the way her life was before ceases to exist? Uh, does he get her hooked on drugs, yeah. which in turn ends her life down the road and derails her? There's different ways you can read that morose feeling that you get, that dark feeling connected to the person that she's dating. It's too bad that she doesn't have better sense herself because we've all we've all been around people who have terrible energy. Like we just went to the store and I'm like, oh my God, everybody in there is like dead inside. Mm -hmm. That was so weird even to be there. Like they don't project any life. It's so strange. They yeah. don't enjoy anything. It's so crazy. Um, so we experience things like that, but I know that I'm particularly sensitive, but when I come in contact with somebody that's got a dark or destructive energy, I recognize it right away because I'm not destructive in yeah. nature. And people who are will repel people who are constructive in their lives. So that's good for you in life because you'll be able to pick them out. They're not bad boys that are all cool with sweet, you know, sweat back hair that are young guys you know, those turn into 50-year-old dudes with some serious issues, you know, and they just don't look as cute anymore. But the damage can be felt early on in oh, people like it, that, right? For sure, yeah. So um, even when you meet a guy and go on a date and you say that guy's boring, well, his life must have been pretty in order. You have to have a pretty organized <laughs> life and your parents had to have been all right for you to feel boring because you're not torn up, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. So, um, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I would say that don't read in too much to the death aspect, get a second opinion. Fear will absolutely make a prediction feeling, a reading of energy connected to someone you love worse. Mm -hmm. Your own personal fear for your sister that you've seen her be in danger before, or you've worried about her and your nephew making it, you know, financially and just in the world and being safe. So she probably already is programmed to worry about her sister. And That's what I, I was thinking too. I think yeah. she said it's her younger sister yeah. too. So even more so programmed to worry about baby, baby sister there. Mm -hmm. um, they're only 14 months apart. So she probably grew up feeling completely responsible for her to keep an eye on her and protect her. And here comes this guy that gives her a bad feeling. Now, I will say this, listening to her message and feeling her energy. I think she said her name was Autumn. I'm not sure. I think it's Autumn, too. Okay, yeah, great. I heard that. Okay, so 
Um, I've, I probed her energy a little. I think she has some weak borders and boundaries. I will say that. And, you know, I'm a truth factor. It's I just know. who I am. So I'm just calling it out. Autumn, it's not a bad thing. It's just borders and boundaries become important with predictions and your accuracy in using it in a professional way or a daily way and keeping a journal where you can see what your accuracy level is so that when something like this does come up, you know, you know whether or not to lean into it more or you're just being paranoid, you know. And I'd rather be paranoid than be wrong at the same time. So I would definitely get the second opinion on this. Um, I would, if I'm really worried about younger sister here, I'm giving that eighth grade nephew a separate phone that he can call me at any time and let me know if something's wrong in the household because he's going to be her eyes you're in, right. In there. That's an important conversation to have with him. My sense is yeah. the nephew, very clear headed, mm -hmm. very level headed. I just get this feeling that he is. And I feel like he sees it too. Um, and that he doesn't want to want to be there. You know, mm -hmm. this kid wants to get through school and get out of the house. That's who this kid is. So he's probably going to be pretty motivated, a person, to succeed. Mm -hmm. But sometimes those people grow up with parents who are lost in their own drama of their relationships. It's like, hey, mom, how about not having a boyfriend for, oh, I don't know, four years? Just go on dates, maybe. And um, let me just get through school. And then it's like, see ya, date them all, you know? Yeah, but I, I have to say that um, with her talking to the nephew, like you said, with him being in eighth grade, make sure that he's a kid still, too. Like, don't yeah. get him wrapped up in all this chaotic good drama point, you right? know what i mean like take him to ice cream or take him to do fun things too so he has a childhood because yeah. i feel like that, he is feeling my like, sense is that kid grew up fast already that's what i was thinking too because kids that grow up in in difficult situations um which my sense is that his has been just trying well, to get through day to parent. day right yeah right because it, it's true you whether people want to hear it or not mm -hmm. two parents are able to give more attention than yeah. one it's yeah. just a fact yeah so it doesn't mean a single parent can't raise a child that's healthy and, and good and upstanding in society. It just means it's a lot more work and you need somebody mm -hmm. with a little bit more of uh, iron hand or um, stronger borders and boundaries. So with the kid, you're right. Take him to the fair. Uh, take him shopping. Kids of that mm -hmm. age are so um, self, uh, you know, conscious of how they look and get his hair done. Be that aunt. At the same time, you're right. He shouldn't have to grow up so fast. My sense is he already has. But in the event that he hasn't, give him the phone with a smile on your face. Say, you know, put this in a drawer. But if something ever happens in the house and you're uncomfortable with it, I want you to call me and I'll come over. Yeah. You know, you just let me know. Or you text me 911 and I'm there. Just so he knows yeah, that he's not that alone way, in the house, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because... Guys, such as the energy she's picking up on, if there is a violent energy to him that she may be feeling, I want to make sure that kid doesn't get caught up in a crime scene situation between the mom and the boyfriend. So he needs an outlet. I would give him an emergency phone to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right. Or just say, hey, text me or call me when you can, because I'm sure he has a phone or well, if but see, the boyfriend know. knows if he already has a yeah. phone from his mom. And I've been on a lot of murder scenes mm -hmm. and, such, and domestic violence scenes. They know how many phones are in the house. And often the, men, the man will um, take the phones, mm -hmm. will be one of the first things they do so they can't call out. Because they used to pull the wires out of the wall, the cords out of the wall, so no one could call for help. Now they have to make sure they have the phones. So I just want to make sure there's an emergency phone in a drawer somewhere in case he needs something as backup. Smart. So, okay. Smart. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I've seen a lot. So it's, uh, it's what I would do anyways. It's yeah. what I would do. Um, so let's go on to the next caller, Sophia. Okay. Hi, Allison. I just left the message and now I'm leaving another one because I'm actually listening to your podcast and I thought of something that I also wanted to ask. Um, I had said that my dad uh, suddenly passed away in December from acute myeloid leukemia, uh, very unexpected. Um, before we even knew he was sick, which uh, I would say a month or two before he, I, we even knew he was sick, I had this dream that I've never had before 
and there were these two, all I could say are just these, just these angels that were just the epitome of what you would think of as angels. Uh, they weren't like in white, but they did have these big wings, and they weren't white wings. I, I, it's almost like things were tinted in yellows and oranges and such, and one was definitely a female, looked beautiful, like a Victorian angel, if you will. Um, and they weren't speaking to me, but I knew we were communicating, and I knew that I had a choice at that moment to stay with them or to go back down. And this is a dream. I'm not sick, nothing. Um, and the overwhelming feeling of love from these angels, the pull that it had, I, I, I just can't even put it into words. It was so intoxicating that I can... I considered not going back to my family. I wanted to stay with them. I wanted to keep that feeling. I wanted to be with them. That's how powerful it was. Fast forward to when my dad got sick, and I think about that dream, and I wonder if they presented that to me, anticipating what knowing that was going to happen with my dad, and I wonder is that what he experienced? He was in a medically induced sleep. Um, I feel like he had a choice to stay and try or to go. And I wonder if that was, it really is a gift, that dream. If it was given to me for that reason. Or did something really happen? Was I in my sleep? I'm getting to let go of it. I'm going to die. <laughs> I don't think so, but. Anyway, I just wanted to say that to you. Thank you. Shall I start or do you want to? <laughs> you can start. Okay. Her connection. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, we get all kinds of connections, don't we? Um, no, the phone. No, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> same page. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool same cool. page. <laughs> um, so her dad died. I want to talk about medically induced comas a little bit. Okay. Because I, I think it happens more frequently than people think, and they wonder where they're at. Mm. So she's not wrong. Her dad would have been around what near-death NDEs experiences have talked about. They see people on the other side, these figures that almost don't seem human, um, that seem powerful, that communicate telepathically. And... They don't want to leave, and mm -hmm. they, they actually get angry when they wake up in their body, and they say it hurts to be in their body, and they don't want to go back in it, and they argue with the people on the other side that they don't want to go back, and they're told they have to. So her dad was in a medically induced coma. It sounded like he was really sick, too, on top of it. So this isn't like he was in a bike accident, and you know his well, body was healthy. Leukemia. Right, so yeah. it was cancer, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that so he wasn't going to survive this, and he's being given this opportunity. Hey, you can get out of this right now. You don't have to go back in there. You don't have to fight anymore. You can be with the people that were taken from you throughout your life. They will be returned to you today, now, and it is this euphoric feeling that people describe when they're on the other side. This all loving, no pain. Um, comfort that you're wrapped in so that's what he, people in medically induced comas feel now for some of them i've heard especially if they had to go if they were in a coma because of like childbirth and something went wrong and they end up in a coma and they're trying to bring them back yeah. um often i hear the women say they came back because the, per the people on the other side started showing them the child's future without her. Ooh, and so, hit. right. And so it gives them the strength, the anger almost to come back for that child. So they but choose, they choose the pain to be with the child mm -hmm. and that's love. And so with this dad though, his kids are older. He knows they're going to be okay. The other side would have shown him how they would be mm -hmm. in the future and that they would be okay. So he knew that they would survive this and figure life out and he'd see him again. Well, and, and I'm sure the cancer was probably stage four or something right. where he's like, well, what am I going to do? 
yeah. continue to be sick and not be able to right. even play with my right. kids or right. grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. So, so right. There was no yeah. upside for him. He's like exit stage left. Right. I'm out. Peace. I would. You know? I mean, bye. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that for all the people that do have a loved one that is in a medically induced coma or a coma, um, I find the medically induced comas and comas feel the same to me as far as the people and what they're experiencing. And, and for both of them, it's a question on whether or not to stay or, you know, with the people that they've crossed over to. Uh, they'll see grandparents, they see parents, they see people they love that are there and they want mm -hmm. to stay. So Old pets too that they're probably like oh my god i know yeah, yeah i think they save those for last because well, yeah. some people be like no way i'm not going back i want to be with peanut butter again you know? <laughs> like, uh, so so i think for her dad he knew that they would understand that this was grace being shown for him it was kindness from the universe for him to peacefully transition and let go now the angels the victorian angels that she saw in the dream that feeling she got, how it had a pulse. And I've talked about that in um, my book, Love Can't Tell Time. Um, I talk about colors on the other side and emotions and how it's like a pulse. It's a feeling. It's something that resonates and, and reverberates throughout your body. It's like alive. It's, it's incredible. And so she wanted to stay where she was at when she saw these angels because it feels perfect mm -hmm. like everything is as it should be yeah in that moment yeah. and and you feel whole mm -hmm. so every wound you ever had is gone and i don't mean physical wounds i mean emotional but physical too if you you know lost some limbs mm -hmm. they're restored you're climbing trees you're boating you're doing things so what's the payoff of coming back they're like ouch that's gonna hurt yeah. i don't want to go back and learn how to walk again um, yeah. so she was being shown this dream so that she understood what her father was feeling on the other side in the moment that he passed. So they were showing her kindness. Mm -hmm. Um, and he may have even requested that they show that to her. So she'd understand she didn't have to worry. Mm -hmm. So I feel like in a way that was her dad communicating that scene to her. Um, so she'd understand there was nothing to cry about here. And that he was in good hands. Yeah. And so that that's my take. I love your take. Thank you. I love your take. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I've heard of these stories before. Yeah. Uh, you're right, of the near-death experience people. Beyond and Back, that one show. Oh, my gosh, too. yeah. And they so always describe these angels mm -hmm. where they're beautiful mm -hmm. and they make them feel loved and warm and cared for. And you're right, whole and... I'd be kind of pissed too if I right. woke up and I'm yeah. like, oh, shit, what? Oh, yeah, it's rent due today. Oh, God. Yeah, right. like chaos. Right. So, no, I think you're right. I think her dad requested them to show her because she would have understood yeah. what that dr dream meant and then came to you to mm -hmm. further clarify. I love that. Yeah. I'm happy she called back. And I, I am too. Mm -hmm. And I will also say that they will all, people will also describe some um, powerful presences on the other side that are very serious, that aren't, mm. that don't feel um, warm and sweet. Angels have been described as warriors, and so are some of these other figures that they talk about being so much bigger than us, you know, that, oh, yeah. are, that are wisdom mm -hmm. speaking to them, showing them the meaning of life and how everything, like, intersects. And so... There are a lot of different beings. I don't know if we're given the ones that we need because of our own personalities and what, how mm -hmm. we would respond to them uh, or, or what that scenario is. I'll get back to you after I die. I'm not sure. Oh, so. okay. Uh, amazing. <laughs> um, well, no, yeah. I've heard, um, I think it's for like in the Bible, angels, mm -hmm. aren't they yeah. just giant eyes with um, wings? I've no, they they're in human form and with with wings. Uh, definitely. I don't know if we see them with wings because that's what they really have or that's what we expect mm -hmm. because that's what <laughs> totally. we that's what we yeah. expect. You know, when we yeah. cross to well, see something in the like that. And right. They have to fly up there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think depending on how you live also determines what you see on the other side when you cross, because I've 
heard mm -hmm. stories of some people who didn't live life right and they wouldn't be considered what we would think of as a good person. Mm -hmm. And people often wonder where they go. No place good. And they talk about being surrounded by dark figures when they're there and knowing that they're in a dangerous place um, and then these figures piling on top of them and hold, weighting them down and they feel like they're suffocating. And in that moment, I remember this one man said he remembered being a little boy at church with his parents and he started praying. And when he prayed, the blackness on top of him lifted and he was transported to another area with some very solemn looking figures. And I think they were trying to figure out where he belongs Mm. in that moment so it was interesting and he actually said to them I don't deserve to go to the good place I wasn't a good person I didn't live a good life and they explained to him it, on a core level he was actually a good person because in that moment spiritually he called out mm -hmm. and that belief was still inside of him and that's what it took well so also it's interesting bad people would not be like i don't deserve to go to you know what i mean they don't have those truly morals. bad people Tru that's a good point they wouldn't say yeah. that no They'd they're be selfish like, let me in how yeah, do i get let in? Me in yeah how do, <laughs> just tell me how to do it you oh. can't steal it you can't yeah. you can't and like i regret my crimes like you know what i mean so, so i think fact, you're talking about remorse <laughs> yes exactly so the fact that you know he said I don't deserve right. He's a good person. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they sent him back to learn what it is and to live the life that he hadn't been living. And he did come back and yeah. live that life. I think this is a PSA to all <laughs> listening. Um, be a good person. Right. <laughs> so. Well, not, there's a lot of people out there confused by what that means, yeah. I think. Okay. Because you have people who say, um, you know, I love everybody and be yourself. And then somebody's themselves and they become a troll on social media saying the nastiest things to strangers they don't know. It's like, okay, now what you're doing is making you not a good person because right. you're Bullying. emitting some mm -hmm. sort of hate to people. You're, you're announcing it, and that's negative. Mm -hmm. So people really have to pay attention to their idea of what a good person is. Just like people used to get, I remember boomers getting mad about this. They'd say to their parents, <laughs> sorry, they'd say Boomers. to their parents, um, just because you go to church, you're not a good person. And it's like, well, the other side of that from Gen X is just because you don't go to church doesn't make you a good person right. either. Yeah. So it's your actions. It's, it's what you do. And it doesn't mean you can't push back and have borders and boundaries and be honest and truthful, which has become challenging for people. They're worried how it's going to affect everyone. Mm -hmm. It's like, just put it out there. Then they know. Mm -hmm. Just say it. Right. You know? um, and so, yeah, it, it's interesting. Everybody's trying to find their own definition. And then we turn on the news and we see some clear examples of people who are definitely not going to a good place. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, the people that don't value other people and other people's suffering is a problem. And um, and that even with the looting and people like breaking in and defacing the statues and everything that's been going on, that's not good. That doesn't go down as a misdemeanor on the other side. Right. That's something where you get probation in this mixed up world. Well, it's like, where do these people find the audacity? Oh, you I know. know what I mean? I want to like, know who raised them. Who I raised want a them? television series that just shows the parents that raised them and puts the, the spotlight on them. It's like, how did you raise that? Yeah. How did you let that happen and release it into society? Well, do you remember, um, I think it was 2020, or I don't know, but in Scottsdale at Fashion Square. Oh, you're talking when the 500 riots Summer of Love was happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they just stole all, no. all this stuff. Well, they and tried. Broke. And across the street, I loved Old Town. The shop owners came out with their weapons and they're like, because they bust people in from other states and they're like, keep going. The ones right. with the weapons, they're like, you're not coming in my store. And guess what? They got back on their buses and left. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens when good stands their ground against dark. And that, that's nuts that was me. That was an amazing example. And we didn't even get the worst of it. The no. rest of the country, oh my, oh my God, they're like, where are our cops? <laughs> that's right? crazy. They all, do, yeah, where are they? That was crazy. We had people, and I saw pickup trucks like flying down Scottsdale Road going to Old Town. We're good old boys here. They had their guns. 
They're like going to help. They were going. They were going in to help. I remember so, Aurora wanted to go to Fashion Square to just see it all in person. I'm like, are you? Like, yeah. Crazy. Like, are you what? daft? Are you, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. no. Go home. Yeah. Lock, lock your doors. Because you just feed the energy of those people. It becomes a mob mentality. But my point being that people who are involved in things that we see today that we've become desensitized to because nothing gets done about it. There is a penance to pay later in life. And so the, the recreation, the reenactments of scenarios where the people who were bad in life that went to this other place, uh, where the dark images were piling on top of them and suffocating them, uh, was a very real thing. And it's going to be interesting because we have more people now, more souls, more bad, more good. So... The other side's going to be very busy in getting people where they need to be, I would suppose. No so kidding. I'd love to have a bird's eye view on that one. Well, can I, wait, am I allowed to cuss on here? Sure. Karma's a bitch. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to see it going. So true. Yeah, you're going to get what you deserve. No, it's true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people feel sorry for everybody. I don't. I don't. Oh. People know when they're doing something that's wrong. Rape is wrong. Murder's wrong. They know it's wrong. And I've felt the fear that a victim has felt at the moment they're about to lose their life, knowing that person has the, the power to take it from them. And every fiber of their being, they want to stay. And there's no fear like that fear that they emit before they're killed. I do not feel sorry for the people that don't go to the good place. I feel bad they didn't either have a better upbringing or they've got some messed up DNA that they were predisposed to be um, hunters in our society. So just hope they don't reproduce. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, you know, here's the thing. I know everybody's like, oh, we've got to, you know, make sure women have their rights. It's like, why don't they just make birth control free? Can we all just agree on that? Make birth control free. Women, ladies, if you have pills and you've got ointments and we've got like everything at our disposal, make it free. And then yeah. we don't have to worry about anything. And then if you don't do anything about it, that's on you. But for now, I agree. You know, well, there's free birth, some birth control. control that's expensive, like okay. really expensive. And it shouldn't be. And men, they get like free Viagra and stuff like that. Like, what's that about? Like, don't tell me. I don't even think if women were in charge, it would change anything, honestly. So this is corporations, mm -hmm. which is a whole nother lesson other than. Big Angels, pharma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big far right. Yeah, wait. How did we get? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. If we just were seeing this um, ap application of today, um, and good and bad. Yes, that we were trying to make a correlation. <laughs> so, well, where can people find you if they want to get more information on you and your life and in your story? Yeah. Um, I have Instagram. It's Sophia Dubois photo is my photography. And if you do want to see my personal, it's at Sophia underscore Dubois. So I'm very easy to find. That's true. <laughs> yes. That's true. So I'm okay. also the one that books readings. So I know that's true. <laughs> I, that's I, true. I talk to everyone. They're like, are you the, are you her daughter? The one that does love me, love me not. And I was like, mm -hmm, that's me. <laughs> that's my girl. Yes. So, um, yes, you, you do a lot for dad and I, so thank you. We have a family run business we and do. we like to keep it that way. <laughs> yes. All right, cool. So we'll have you back soon when we get some more relationship questions in, uh, Mercury's going retrograde tomorrow. So that's Sunday. We're recording yeah. on Saturday here and then this airs Tuesday. So it will be, Mercury will be retrograde for a few weeks. So I hope everybody's got extra batteries for their phones um, new chargers, your chargers are going to die. Print out your boarding pass before you go to the airport because the machines could go down while you're there. Triple check all of your hotel reservations, flight reservations, car rentals, everything. Triple check. Make that your middle name True. in Mercury Retrograde. And it is foot and mouth disease, so only open your mouth if you thought through carefully what you want to say first. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you, Sophia, for being here. And thank you to my listeners for tuning in. You can catch me next Tuesday for a fresh episode of The Dead Life. I'm Allison Dubois. This is The Dead Life. And to all of my believers out there, don't stop believing.